Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about a relatively new study that talks about a potential new way for us to look for extraterrestrial intelligence. Let's discuss this and welcome to What The Math. In our search for extraterrestrial intelligence, we've actually been able to identify quite a lot of various factors that would be important for us to find something as intelligent as basically humans. Now, one of the recent studies from Instituto de Astrofisica de Canarias, um, with the main investigator, whose name is Hector Socas Navarro, um, basically proposed looking at the so-called Clark exobelt. Let me actually briefly show you what this is. You are more uh, familiar with it under a different name, but let me just first place it here so you can actually visualize it. Now this right here is what we know, know as the geostationary um, satellite orbit. And basically this is also known as the Clark uh, exobelt named after Arthur C. Clarke who proposed it back in 1945, I believe. Uh, and it then became a reality as we basically realized how useful this was. Today we cannot live without this. A lot of our satellites are positioned in the Clark exobelt, basically in the geostationary orbit, so we can actually directly communicate with Earth because these satellites are always, always, always facing the same spot on the planet. Uh, we're actually going to talk more about these uh, satellites and their position in the video this week, but for now all you need to know is that these are extremely important. and. An advanced civilization that actually has some sort of um, advanced communication method would most likely require these satellites for basically its survival, for communicating with the entire planet, and obviously for having some really, really cool things like the internet and GPS and smartphones. So we absolutely depend on these today. Obviously not for survival, but for advanced communication. But the thing is, the chance for a natural satellite to actually appear in this position completely randomly is very, very, very low. As a matter of fact, it is so low that it's almost impossible to happen. So if we actually detect something like a moon or more specifically a ring in the orbit around a planet and that particular ring is actually in a geostationary orbit and it looks like I completely destroyed everything here. But yes, so if you detect a ring that is in geostationary orbit around a planet, it's most likely to have been placed there artificially. In other words, aliens. That's right, aliens. At least a very, very high chance of it being aliens. And so this basically creates an opportunity for us to look for aliens in a completely different and somewhat realistic way by looking at rings around planets and seeing if, if those rings are in geostationary orbits. Now, this is actually a pretty cool technique, and it's still kind of not very easy for us, but very, very possible. First of all, in the last few years, we've actually been discovering quite a lot of different exoplanets that seem to have been identified as uh, puffy planets, or basically planets that seem to have very Earth-like conditions, yet very, very large size. But then some scientists realize that we may have actually misidentified them. As a matter of fact, a lot of scientists today believe that there is a chance that some of these planets are actually a lot smaller than we initially thought they are. And also, instead of actual poofiness, they, what they seem to have are the rings around them. In other words, we may have identified several ringed exoplanets that are actually out there. And this one is kind of difficult to see, but it's right there. Uh, and we misidentified them by thinking that this was actually the atmospheric layer. So today, several scientists are actually trying to find a better technique on how to identify these rings around these exoplanets in order for us to find them better. So as we are more likely to find more of these ringed exoplanets in the future, we can now start thinking about what is it that we need to discover about them for us to identify if these rings are in geostationary orbit. And the first step here is, of course, the rotation of the planet. Now, I'm going to use uh, the closest exoplanet to us, Proxima b, for this particular analysis, and we're going to try to find a way for us to calculate uh, where is it that we need to place the actual rings 
In order for, let's say, Proxima B to actually have uh, the so-called geostationary rings. And so we're going to do a little bit of math here and a little bit of imagining, but specifically we're actually are missing one very, very important parameter. We don't really know how fast most of these uh, planets rotate. And uh, in case of red wars, we've actually identified that most of them most likely actually have a rotational period equivalent to their orbital period. In other words, they always have the same rotational and orbital period. So the same face is always facing the sun and then the other face is always uh, facing the other direction. Now, this is still an assumption because we haven't really studied uh, these with any of the more advanced telescopes. And most of this is based on mathematics and the idea of looking at uh, planets like Jupiter and Saturn and seeing that all of the satellites there are also tidally locked. And so using red worlds, we can kind of make an assumption that for most of these planets, they probably have orbital period and rotational period um, equal. So here, the actual rotation takes about 11 days, 11 times longer than on Earth. The mass here is about 1.27 masses of Earth. And we need to uh, try to calculate the uh, radius of geostationary orbit using the formula that you see on the screen. G is the gravitational constant. This is a constant that doesn't change across the universe. M is the mass of the planet. And here we're going to be using uh, the mass in kilograms, which is right here. And um, omega, omega square specifically, is uh, basically found by taking 2 pi radians and dividing it by number of seconds for one single period. And this will give you a number that's approximately 506,222. If we combine all of this and take a cubic root of this, what we'll get is a value approximately 228,381 kilometers. In other words, it would look something like this. So here is a hypothetical geostationary ring around Proxima b. And if using more advanced telescopes, we are able to detect something like this, and we are able to detect some sorts of objects in this particular orbit, as you can see, it actually doesn't stay very stable. Okay, so maybe geostationary orbit around Proxima b is actually very difficult to attain because it seems that due to the proximity to Proxima Centauri, it's quickly destabilized. But if there is something in this orbit, we can kind of make an assumption that it is probably artificial. In this particular simulation, it, we've discovered that it's difficult to have this orbit. And this is because of the fact that the planet is too close to the star and the geostationary orbit is way, way too far away. So very, very unstable in that sense. Now, there are definitely going to be planets where we'll, we're able to have a geostationary orbit and we just need to keep looking for both the rings and uh, somehow be able to discover the rotational period of the planet. For now though, that's essentially it. That's kind of all I wanted to talk about in this video. And it's definitely a really, really interesting technique on how to find potential extraterrestrial intelligence. Now, as we discover more ringed planets, we'll definitely come back to this and probably try to analyze some of those parameters yet again. But for now, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye bye.